So I'm going to make some scones today. I'm going to make orange thyme and orange scones. So it's orange thyme and some orange in there. And the scones are sweet scones, so you can have these for tea time. And um, you probably have some apricot jam, something like that on them. Um, so they're quite warm and spicy. Um, the thyme makes them a nice kind of flavor, really. So to start off with, what we're going to do is we're going to weigh out 500 grams of self-raising flour. And I'm going to sieve it, and that way it's going to get more air into the mixture. So 500 grams equivalent to um, a pound in old money. And I probably should have told you that I've preheated the oven. The oven's on um, 210 centigrade, and that's for a fan oven. And then into there, I'm also going to add some baking powder, and that's going to give it even more oomph, because scones need lots of oomph in order to rise. And I'm actually going to um, sieve that as well. So we've got self-raising flour and baking powder in the mix and then into that we're going to add butter and we need 125 grams of butter so I'll just put the scale on zero so in we go that's 85 that's just 125 there okay so what we do now is we get in there with our hands if you're using block butter you might find that this takes a little bit longer to um, just to get together to to move together and to make into a sort of bread crummy sort of stage really um, nice and light all the time with scones because the lighter you are with them the lighter they will be and when we're rolling them out, we never use a rolling pin for scones because we don't want to flatten them. We want to keep them nice and light. So as you can see in the bowl here, the mixture is becoming together now. No lumps left, no lumps of butter. It's all coming back, all coming to breadcrumbs really nicely. Okay. And at this stage, we can add a little bit of sugar. Now we don't want to go mad on the sugar. We do want a little bit of sugar. So we're just going to say about <coughs> a tablespoon of sugar. Don't bother me to weigh that out. Just a tablespoon of sugar in there. We'll just mix that in together. Now these are rich scones and we're going to add milk and egg to mix them to bind them together but the vital ingredients need to go in next and those vital ingredients are the thyme and the zest of the, of the um, orange. So you can see little bits of orange coming off there. Okay but we've got quite a bit of orange into the bowl there and then into that we're going to add the orange thyme. Now orange thyme is, as I said, it's quite sort of um, warm and sort of spicy really and it can be added to um, treacle tarts. You can also, it's really nice with things like um, game, pheasant, really nice with um, uh, duck. And I've got a little sprig here, which I'm going to now just cut into small, small pieces with my herb scissors. You want them into small pieces because you don't want big lumps of stem. You want mostly the leaves. And as you get further down into the thyme plant, it gets tougher. So the, the younger leaves are fine, but don't put the old stems in there. Just pull the leaves off the... Uh, the bottom stems okay it's a really nice fragrance coming off that it's really nice and fruity 
you can see there's one or two stems escaped into there so I'm just going to pull those off and add those in we want two more in when you're trimming your thyme it's a good idea to just trim the ends quite frequently and that helps the plant to grow nicely too if it doesn't get trimmed it tends to go leggy and lots of people complain that their thyme has gone really um, really leggy and, and not very nice and, and the best thing to do really is to keep trimming them and keep using them otherwise they do tend to do that thyme like sunshine so if you're growing thyme in the garden put it in the sunniest place you've got and they don't like to be too wet okay so there we have the thyme in there that's probably quite enough now okay i'll just give that a mix around other combinations might be um, lemon with lemon thyme or you might like to, to do rosemary and sometimes to do rosemary with cheese that's nice bergamot scones are good right so the next thing we need to do is the um, egg goes in this is a free range egg again nice free range egg is going to give you nice colour and also it will um, if it's nice and fresh it'll help the scones to rise so we've got egg in there and we also need milk so I'm using full fat milk probably going to need about 8 to 10 fluid ounces of made up with the egg okay and I'll just give that a little bit of a around just to incorporate the egg and the milk together and then just making a well in the middle of your scone mixture it's going to add nearly all of the, the liquid not all of it because I want to keep some in case I don't need it all okay and then just start mixing it round and you'll soon see whether you're going to need it all the important thing to remember with scones is lightness not to be not to all the mix to keep them nice and soft not too dry but not to all the mix and at this stage I think it's probably a good idea for me to put my hands in just get rid of some of this stuff See it's all coming together now. Probably don't need that last little bit. It's just about the right consistency. Just make sure that you get together all the dry ingredients that are left on the sides of the bowl. You can take off what's on your hands. job we're going to do is to put some flour onto a surface ready to um, press out the scones. I'll just get a board to put on the table. Okay so we just need to sprinkle the board with a little bit of flour. And then we're going to put the mixture out onto the board. I can already smell that lovely orange uh, tanginess from the, the mixture. And you can see how soft that mixture is. It's not like pastry at all. And I'm just patting it down rather than rolling it out to keep as much air in as I can. Then we're just going to put a little bit of flour on the side here 
and just cover the um, cutter with some flour. You can choose whatever size cutter you like, but I find that this usually gives me nine or ten scones out of this size mix, and that's just what I need usually on a Saturday or a Sunday afternoon. Okay, nice, no screwing with your cutter, just a nice straight um, cut. And can you see how I'm just making sure that the sides are nice and straight? And then onto some baking sheet. The worst thing you can have is scones that look like mountains. You don't, really don't want a point on your scones. They need to be as um, flat as possible with nice straight sides and well risen. And hopefully if you remember nice fresh egg, um, baking powder, self raising flour, all of these things will help your scones to rise and of course being light with the mixture and not rolling it flat. So you could add cherries, couldn't you? Cherries are good, cherry and almond scones are really nice. Um, and with cherry and almond, you just um, put a, a couple of ounces of almond, ground almonds instead of um, the flour. So instead of um, 500 grams of self-raising flour you might put about 50 grams of almonds and 450 of the self-raising flour and then just add some cherries instead of the, the um, instead of the orange and thyme you just add some very finely chopped cherries we might get 10 out of this. Can you see that I'm making the last one almost as big as the cutter? And that way you do make the most of that last bit. I'm not going to use that bit because it's no good putting it on. It's not going to do anything. But that last bit might be okay. That, that last's gone. We'll just move them over and pop it in there. So we've got 10 out today. Okay doesn't matter if they're close together because I quite like the idea that they're going to spread a little bit, touch, and then we have to prise them apart. I think that's really nice for scones to be like that. And I'm not going to put any milk or, or anything on top of them. I just leave them as they are. Um, and then when we get them, get them out of the oven, straight onto a baking tray. But I'll put them in the oven now. 210 degrees C. And after 15 minutes in the oven, this is the finished result.